Welcome to the Desire to Dream podcast. I'm your host, Low Wilder. The vision of this podcast is to provide tools on how to become successful in your finances, business, leadership development, and much more. A little bit about me, I grew up in the hood, homeless at the age of 14. I made a choice not to become a product of my environment. And today, I am a successful businessman, community leader, and inspirational speaker. It is my desire to encourage and empower you to unlock your greatness. So tune in and enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Desire to Dream podcast. I'm your host, Lo Wilder. And today, I have a Hamptonian sister, one of my good friends. I've known for over a decade, man. She is doing amazing work with branding and marketing in the digital space, uh, helping people, you know, increase their um, their followers. She's out there just doing great things. My friend, my sister, Adrian M. White. How are you, Adrian? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me today. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Listen, man, I'm excited, man. And, um, you know, first off, I just want to shout you out, man. Your background is just fire. You know, I know I shared it with you before, but had to, had to put it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Adrian, man, you know, Hampton University, uh, we met freshman year, um, been known each other for many, many years. I've been following you on all the social media. Um, we had you here at the house, you know, just a few months ago. But for those that are listening, um, who may not know you, you know, tell them a little, a little background, you know, of who you are and, and where you're from. Yeah, yeah. So as you mentioned, my name is Adrian White. And I am a brand strategist, web designer, and marketing coach. I live in the D.C. metropolitan area. Um, I have been doing, I've, I've been running my own business for the last nine years, but have been a full-time entrepreneur for the last three years. And I've been designing websites for the last 20 years because I started in high school designing like my space and Black Planet pages. <laughs> wow, so, you're bringing us back, man. I'm, I'm sure there's probably people listening like MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I don't even know where MySpace is. Man, right now. Hey, Tom is, Tom is gone. You know, Mark took over. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah so yeah so yeah I've been in the game for a minute now um and yeah I come from a family of entrepreneurs so mm -hmm. you know the entrepreneur spirit was in my blood from a right. very young age wow you know um I know we we've shared this but I think it's, it's it's a good time to kind of talk a little bit about the fact that you were uh working with an organization um and you were you had a successful career you know it wasn't like you were, you know, unhappy or anything like that, but that entrepreneurial, um, you know, spirit in you was just screaming out, like, go out, go out, do your own thing. You know, there's a lot of people that are listening right now who are working their nine to fives. Um, and some of them, you know, may have entrepreneurial um, aspirations, but what does it take for one to go from a nine to five and then say, okay, I'm going full out. Like, what did you do while you still had that job, you know, prior to leaving and going out on your own? Yeah, um, so I would say years before I ever actually went full-time, I was preparing to go mm. full-time. And mm. what that meant is I, you know, even though I was doing my business as a side hustle, I was, you know, taking it seriously and raising my rates and, you know, making sure that I was um, setting a really good foundation to run a sustainable business. So right. I would say to start, um, a lot of people when they, you know, start their businesses and they're doing it on the side and they don't need the check from mm -hmm. there, um, especially people of color, we're used to kind of undercutting our rates and not charging you know, our full worth or need what a family is, discount, need a family discount. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So right. like, you know, and I, I got caught up in that too. Like I'm, <laughs> you know, selling websites for two fifty, right, and then, right. you know, it went up to 500 and stuff. So it was, it was super cheap. Mm. Um, but the quality of my work, um, was, you know, far surpassed right. how much I was charging for the site. So I think if you're able to actually do your competitive research and figure out what you should be charging and stuff mm. early on in your business it'll set you up better for when you're you know you actually go full time so right, right. I did all of that you know and I, I kept raising my rates and doing different things while I was conducting my business on the side mm. and then um 
the year prior to going full time, I had like three or four signs from God that I was supposed to go go full time that next year at the be- specifically the beginning of the next year. Wow! Um, and so that's when I got really serious about it. And the biggest thing that I did is I aggressively paid off my student loan debt. Mm. Wow! If I had if I had a clue bomb, I would drop it right now. Like. <sighs> <laughs> That student loan debt is serious. Um, you know, I'm fortunate not to not to experience that, but I, I'm very close with a lot of people, um, you know, who are, who are dealing with that. So that's major. You know, that's that's huge. Um, was there any fear of going out on your own? Like you, you know, you're like, even though you paid off some debt, you know, I know you have a condo, you, you got your everyday bills. Right. So I'm sure there was some some fear in there. But, you know, what what was uh, how did you overpower that and overcome that fear and and, and really go out there on your own? Yeah, I definitely had a whole bunch of fear. I had (laughs) fear up until like the day of, day before that I, you know, just put in my notice, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, One story comes into mind, um, one story in particular comes into mind of like big struggle that I had. Um, I think I was in, I was still in my first year of full-time entrepreneurship. And um, I was in the, that period where, I, you know, I didn't see any money in my bank account. It was, mm. it was a little nerve wracking and I had a mortgage to pay. Um, in addition to that, I, you know, had diff- different campaigns that I wanted to launch so I could bring in business. I wanted to run Facebook ads and, you know, do different things that were going to require money. So sometimes you have to spend money to make money. Right. Um, so, so that was very challenging, you know, looking at my account and being like, I don't have, I hardly have any money in here. I, and I didn't have like a large savings or anything either. So I really like had nothing. So what I ended up doing is um, my personal credit was pretty good. And I had a high credit limit on one of my personal credit cards. So I decided to take a 20K cash advance from this credit card, not knowing what the repercussions were. When I took it, (laughs) all I knew was that um, they were gonna defer the interest for 18 months, which was good. And it was just gonna be a small payment. So I thought Mm. each month, but once I took that 20K, cash advance, my credit score immediately plummeted 150 points. Wow. Um, My, you know, all these things started happening that I had never been in that position before. Um, And the payments, you know, they said it was going to be a low payment, but it ended up that the minimums were pretty high just because of how how the, how high the balance was. So I was definitely in a, in a grind and a, you know, it wasn't feeling good. (laughs) So even though I had that cash. Um, I was scared to spend it. Um, I didn't know how I was going to repay it. My credit all of a sudden wasn't looking good anymore. Um, so that was, that was a big challenge. And if I could go back in time, I would not have taken, um, that amount of money from my personal credit. I would have done more to see if I could take money from my business credit. Um, it took me, two years to um, get my credit back up. Um, and that included me selling my condo and things like that. So that was a, that was a big, big issue. <laughs> right. <laughs> when I, it was I, I can only imagine. Right. Um, so how did I o- overcome it? Um, I would say, so, you know, I'm a Christian and um, I, I think like as an entrepreneurship, you really need to rely on a higher power because like there's so much of it that you're just walking by faith Mm, and it just, you know, I just can't imagine like not having a higher power that that I'm trusting that things are going to fall into place. So Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I just like, I kind of just pushed through discomfort I prayed a lot and asked God, like, I probably asked God for so many signs that year, like, 
God, is this what you really want me to do? You really <laughs> right. want me to go full time? Like, I don't know. I could do another year. I could get my right, savings right. right. Like, so I kept like, that was the resistance. You know, mm. I kept resisting and kept questioning over and over and over again. But, you know, every time that I would really pray about it and stuff, I would get another sign confirming that I was supposed to do it. And that's probably how I ended up at the three or four signs from God because I kept on like doubting. <laughs> Um, or just being scared. That confirmation is, is, is critical. Um, and then, you know, I was just thinking about when, you know, when God is throwing the signs, a lot of times people are like, mm, yeah, maybe this isn't from God. And, and, and I always, you know, tell people it's important, you know, if you're a Christian to have a relationship with God, because, you know, the, the scripture says like, those who know me will hear my voice. Like, so you will know the voice of God and, and saying, yes, Adrian, I need you to move. I need you to go into this, into this place and into this space. And you have to have the confidence in that. Right. And so, and, and, and reading the word, you build that confidence because you see Moses, right. You see the story of Moses and how he took, you know, millions out of Egypt and brought them out to the desert. And, and even then, you know, um, the struggle, right. There was still a struggle. And I think that's something that, you know, I want to make sure we talk about here in this podcast, because a lot of people want to become entrepreneurs, but they don't, they don't want to embrace the struggle. Like you're going to struggle. You're going to fail. People are, are not going to return your phone calls. Um, you're, you're going to have deals that are on the table and you're excited. And then when it's time to close the deal, they're going to be like, oops, sorry, I'm out. Right. So, uh, talk about some of those struggles um, early on. I'm sure that, you know, hey, you, you raise the prices and people are like, mm, can't do it when you thought you had it. So um, kind of share, you know, if you have any experiences with the struggle. Yes, I, I've i had, you know, a lot of different experiences with, um, you know, feeling like there was a struggle, you know, mm. obviously it's financial usually. So what happens a lot of the times, especially when you're, I'm in, in a service-based business and you're working, you know, month to month. So you might have 10 prospects, you might have had 10, you know, sales calls with them and you are expecting to hear from them, you know, by a certain period of time, or you've given them a deadline, um, and different things happen, mm -hmm. and you get to the end of the month. So you think you may be, you may be um, projected that you were going to close four of those clients, but maybe you only close one of them, and mm. you get to the end of the month, and you know, there's a lot of times you'll look and you'll be like my rent is due tomorrow, my mortgage is due tomorrow, and I don't see the money in my account. Like, mm. what am I about to do? You know, right, like, right. <laughs> you know so that was, that's, that's a, a normal, probably occurrence for right. um, Entrepreneur. full-time entrepreneurs, unless you have, um, you know, unless you were venture funded or, you know, you have, you sitting on a stack or something. I don't know, <laughs> right. I don't know that many people that are sitting on that. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, so it's it's it can be very very challenging. Um, I had more of those experiences that I would have liked to have, you know, early on into my first time, you know, first year of full time entrepreneurship, and I started relying on, um, I would say, credit and capital, and not in a way that like I'm like, you know, charging up credit cards and stuff, but you should be relying a little bit, like you should have a business line of credit. So mm. a business credit card that doesn't, business credit card, um, it doesn't show up on your personal report. It's your business line of credit. So use some of those resources like that. Another resource I really, really like is um, PayPal and Stripe's working capital program. Mm. So if you are um, using them as payment provider, so when, when your customers are paying you, if it's going through PayPal or if it's going through Stripe, Stripe will then offer you um, eventually a working capital loan. And how that works is they'll give you a lump sum of money, um, you know, depending, they determine what that amount would be. Um, and you don't like you get the money it doesn't affect your credit it doesn't affect your business credit it doesn't show up at all um and the repayment plan is they take a percentage of your incoming transaction so mm, when gotcha. i bring on a new client and you know let's say i there's a payment of 3500 that comes through they'll take maybe 10 percent of that and they use it to pay back the loan mm. so it's like 
you almost feel like you don't even like have a loan payment because you're getting the final money. Like I'm getting, you know, whatever that is, the wow. you know, 3,500 minus, um, whatever. Yeah. 350. Yeah. 350. Yeah. And so it's paying back and it's a really good interest rate. And like I said, it doesn't affect like any credit or anything. So you can have like these lump sums, Mm -hmm. you know, of, for, for your business or for your bills. Cause if you were working for yourself, you're an employee and deserve compensation as well. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. So, you know, and, and, and I don't want to go too much into it because I know it's not your, your field, but with the business credit, you know, I think a lot of people when they're setting up a business, an entrepreneur, and, and you might help people with that because you're obviously helping startup businesses with their branding and marketing. Um, but with the, you know, the financial component to it, a lot of people are, are, are always debating, should I do a, a nonprofit? Should I do a for-profit um, LLC, um, you know, a C Corp, you know, do you, like, if you wanted to have a, a lucrative business where you are paying yourself, um, it, it, does nonprofits pay, you know, themselves? Can you do that? Uh, I don't know that much about the makings of like nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Um, I have heard that it can be fairly complicated in right. regards to that. But in I do know more about, you know, starting an LLC. So if you're offering any type of business services, I would just create an LLC. You can, if you don't have a business name, you right. could use your name. I could say Adrian White LLC. And if it's mm-hmm. available, I can register that. Um, and, you know, once you have that business structure together, then you're eligible for different write-offs. Um, so, yeah, I don't know cool. about the nonprofit space, but if right. you're a for consultant profit. or you're freelancing and stuff, I definitely recommend setting up a, um, a single member LLC. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now let's get into the the business, right? Um, and what you do, you know, let, let the listeners know a little bit more about your business. Uh, it's it's a, a space where I feel like there's not a lot of people representing it in the social media platforms. Um, Adrian has an amazing YouTube channel. I'm constantly watching. She's putting it up on her LinkedIn and uh, her social media site. So um, talk a little bit about your business, the service that you do provide uh, for those who are, are, you know, entrepreneurs are trying to take their business to the next level, hey, you'll be someone, a great person to partner up with. Yeah, yeah. So I am the CEO and marketing coach of AMW Marketing Design, and we're a boutique branding, web design, marketing coaching firm in Silver Spring, Maryland, and we specialize in helping coaches, consultants, and personal brands attract and convert more clients and grow six-figure businesses. So I've had the personal journey of growing my business to six figures, and I've helped um, a number of other companies and entrepreneurs grow their business to six figures. Um, So that's the, you know, that's the main part of what we do. Um, But within that, um, most of our clients come to us because they um, are trying to differentiate themselves in the market. So they might have already had their company for a year or two, but they, you know, did a DIY logo or they went to Fiverr or something. Right. Um, they might have created the website themselves, but they don't feel like it accurately reflects who they are um, and what they're about. So they come to us and we um, dig really deep into what is your brand identity? Um, how are you narrating your brand? So we talk about um, competitors who are competitors in your market. Um, mm-hmm. And your competitors are not necessarily like the big wigs you see. Like, um, you know, there's a lot of different names that are out there. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was it a Marie For- Forleo? And, mm-hmm. you know, there's like a lot of the Gary V and yeah, stuff. Yeah, right, so, right. We see those people who are like, oh, those are our competitors, but those are not really our <laughs> right, competitors right, or whatever. Right. Our competitors are other people that kind of do similar things that we do and are in the same level of business. As right. us. So yeah, so we dig really deep into that, to who your competitors are, um, what makes you different from them, um, what is your brand personality and brand voice. Um, So we dig really deep into you. And then once we're able to get the information on how you're going to differentiate yourself, um, you know, then we go to do the brand design, which is developing your logo and your color schemes, making sure it's a professional logo that you could trademark one day. So, you know, not just going 
a lot of times when you go to Fiverr, if you create the logo yourself, mm -hmm. um, they're pulling um, clip art and images from different places. But right. we create our logos from scratch, which are able to be trademarked, um, which you'll want to do one day if you have like a um, something you think is going to blow up or like right, a popular right. uh, name. Um, and so then once we do all of that and we, um, you know, you have your brand style guide together. So you have a document that says all your different brand standard. Then we move to the web design process. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, we'll de we develop custom websites for our clients. They are they are search fire. engine optimized <laughs> and we do all of the copywriting for them. So we write every page of their site. Right. Um, and yeah, that's the, that's the normal process that people go through when they're working with us. Um, now we've expanded the business to offer, um, a digital marketing boot camp. So I have a 12 week digital marketing boot camp, um, which is for people once they have their brand and website launched and they're like, well, what do I do next? How do right. I get clients? How do I get leads? So I, um, you know, train them on how they can market their own business or better market their own business. And we also have a um, marketing maintenance program where we manage the websites, mm. websites we've created and other WordPress websites as well. Right, right. Because you don't want to make the mistake that I did where I um, hired somebody and then uh, they stopped hosting my website and then we went and it went dark. It's like, what happened there? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that definitely I had so happened. many people that they got their site developed from someone else. And now they're coming to us for maintenance. And one of the first questions I asked you was what happened to your original designer? Cause usually they know the best, you know, the most about the way the site was developed, but it right. it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes when it's your cousin Ray Ray, the designer <laughs> site, they know maintenance. So, Absolutely. You know. Right. Right. So, so, you know, for those that are listening, I'm sure um, there's going to be some, some younger millennials um, who are probably listening. And when they, when they hear website, right, they, they think of something and you, you shared something very interesting with me that was profound that I believe needs to be shared here on this podcast, um, where there's still an importance of having a website. Uh, people think that, you know, I can just have my Facebook page. I can just have my, my Instagram account. Um, and I'm good, right? But if you want to take your your business, your brand to a next to the next level, you know why is it so important that you still have your own website? Yeah, yeah, a website um, legitimizes you and your business. So right. no matter what you're doing, um, you need an online home. You know, we all have a place that we live. You need a place for your your brand to live and a website is that place um a website is one of the only places that you completely control the look the feel of it the narrative of it you know on instagram your profile is controlled by instagram you're only able to share what they allow you to share what they approve for you to share or your 120 characters of your bio you know it's not it's not very much it's not you know it's very restrictive so right right having a website allows you to be able to share more than you know just a few characters or just a few videos um, and it also allows um, most people especially when they never heard of someone they want to do research about them so it helps um if you have a website that's built correctly and you're highlighting you know the things you need to highlight um you know it's a place that people can do some background research with you and it's a place where people are making purchasing decisions on if they want to work with you or not right. um you know removing that piece of it um you know it, it, it's just making it harder on yourself to mm. book more clients and you know grow your business it's going to take longer right and that and that's good and and that brings me to another point too where um, I know for myself, it gets very overwhelming um, where when it comes to different things, I, you know, had to learn, uh, you know, I'm, I, I always tell people have a PhD in uh, the University of YouTube, um, because I'm constantly like looking at, you know, how do I edit videos? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, but you talk about the importance of building a team, especially when you're trying to make it to that next level. Jeff Bezos couldn't do it by himself. Bill Gates couldn't do it by himself. Mark Zuckerberg, they couldn't do it by themselves. Um, 
And one of the things that when they hire you on as a marketing, as a marketing and design coach or a professional, um, you talk about that component of having a team and, and it's not like I'm going to build your website and then I'm gone. You know, you actually help, help them and, until they reach a certain level. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, to start my company, we have nine or 10 people that are, you know, working behind the scenes for, mm -hmm for me or for my company. So um, when you work with me, generally you're not just working with me, you might also be working with my copywriter. Um, you might be interacting or you might not even know who you're in. Like you might be interacting with me, but I, I am having my graphic designer create, you know, what you're creating. So that really helps um, keep my business more efficient because I'm able to focus on the things that I'm best at. Um, right. And I know copywriting is not my strong suit. Graphic design is not my strong suit. So um, yeah, having a team is, is really, really important. Um, and it doesn't have to be like a big thing hiring, you know, your first contractor. Um, hiring a contractor is way easier than hiring like a full or part-time employee. So right. yeah, I, I recommend that every business have um, a team to start. Um, if you're not sure, a virtual assistant is a really good place to start. Also a bookkeeper, it's a mm. really good place to start. That's great, that's great. So definitely dropping some nuggets, Adrian. I appreciate it, man. We don't wanna give out too much, um, but uh, we're definitely gonna share um, how you can contact Adrian or even follow her on her YouTube page. We'll have that all in the description. Um, but before we go, you know, if there's an entrepreneur, a young woman, or even a young man, or, or even someone in, in their thirties and forties um, that are listening to this podcast, uh, what, what piece of advice that you wanna give them um, it doesn't have to just be one thing, um, but what would you, what kind of advice would you give them if they're trying to go out and, and leave that nine to five and, and go out and to be in a full entrepreneur, a full-time entrepreneur, uh, what advice would you give them? Yeah. So you've probably heard this before, but it doesn't get old. Do it scared. You know, you're going to be scared. You're, you might never receive all the confirmation that you're looking for and mm -hmm. stuff, but if, if God has placed it on your heart to do something and um, you feel like it's an alignment of what your purpose is, um, go for it and do it. Um, you know, we're, you're going to be scared through a lot of things, but a lot of times um, putting yourself in uncomfortable positions elevates where you're going to go to. So, you know, you might be really scared to make that jump into full-time entrepreneurship, but then once you do it, you know, you're like, wow, that wasn't as bad as I thought. And, you know, you can be in a position like me where you're helping others, you know, mm -hmm. go through that. So um, definitely do it scared. And another thing is um, make sure that whatever you are doing or working on is something that is really passionate to you. Because sometimes people think when they, um, you know, go or pursuing their business or going after their business, that they'll be able to work less hours than they right. work <laughs> nine to five or, right. you know, things like that. And, you know, I, I think I even thought that too, where it's like, oh, okay, like before I was working, you know, my corporate job nine to right. five and my side hustle six to 10, now I can, you know, do my thing nine to five and I'll be nine <laughs> to five. <laughs> um, but you find yourself just, you know, spending more time than that on your business, especially when you're in the initial phases of it. Mm. So make sure it's something that you're passionate about so that you don't feel like it's so much work when you're, you know, it's after five and you're working on it or when it's a weekend and you're, you know, working on your business as well. Right. Man, powerful. Listen, Adrian, thank you so much for uh, being on the, this podcast with us, man. We are, uh, we appreciate you. Um, know that you have a lot of great things going. So please, for those that are listening, go out to Adrian's page, look at her YouTube channel. Um, she's just dropping knowledge. She has the marketing camp, uh, boot camp that she's doing as well. Uh, subscribe to her channel um, and follow Adrian. Adrian, thank you so much. I appreciate you, my sister. Look forward to uh, catching up with you again and thanks a lot you're welcome all right take care everybody god bless you